local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. I don't see why we can't help out students the next generation. All right now at 6 o'clock, student loan debt forgiveness was put on the table. What exactly is in the president's plan? And a lot of kids heading back to class all around the state. Which districts are opening their doors to students once again today? Also, the search continues for a missing teenager. What you can do this morning to help. Good morning. Thanks so much for starting off your day here at Fox 61 with us. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Tim Lambers. Good morning to you. Let's get right over to meteorologist Matt Scott. After a couple of days of rain, we had some nice weather we yesterday. Didn't it feel good? Yes. It felt good last yeah. night, too. Welcome back, yeah. by the way. I was thinking about you coming in. Excited to see you again. I said, I think this is like the first time in like three weeks the team and has all been three together. Of us. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. When she's been on, I've been off. You right, right, when I was right, here, right. you were off. Various vacations and such. The gang's mm. back together. Nice to have you. Let's talk about the weather. Uh, listen, yesterday was nice. I think today's going to be a nice one as well. The temperatures are up. Uh, it's hot. The humidity is in check. We're watching a storm potential for tomorrow. Maybe lighten up the skies with some potential severe weather. We'll discuss that. And, and Still holding on to a great weekend. Maybe a little rain in it, but all in all, pretty good. 67 in Hartford, 72 in New Haven, 66 in Groton. That's where your dew points are. Still in the mid to lower 60s. Our lucky 61 all over the map this morning. We like that as long as we keep the dew point in the lower 60s. We're feeling fine. It was nice last night, and we're going to keep the humidity uh, feeling pretty good. One more day before it spikes as we get this next weather maker on the way. Still have that flow out of the north. Uh, it's going to start to switch by later on the day. Good for a couple of clouds, but other than that, nothing to worry about. Nice start, hot temperatures. We're going to aim for 90 degrees inland. And you know what? You won't be far off of that at the shore either. Talk about the heat and humidity combining for some storms tomorrow. And then we'll discuss that weekend forecast. That's all coming up in a few minutes. First time I get to say hello to Lauren Zenzi, also part of the team. <laughs> hail, hail, the gang's all together. <laughs> Good morning to you. The quad is all here. Vacations are over. Back to school begins. Good morning, everyone. 602 here in the CTDOT Traffic Center. Not a whole lot to get to, but I do want to bring you out to the new Fairfield area where we are still following a closure on Route 39. This is at Knoll Crest Road. It was a one-car crash with a telephone pole down, so we are uh, waiting to see when that will clear. Our we are seeing some heavier delays over in the Meriden area on the northbound side of I-91. No accident has popped up yet, but as of right now, there is a several mile delay. Traffic is moving pretty slow. That 42 is uh, the most further north point, which is that yellow on your screen. Definitely moving slower than that uh, further south of that point on there. Harford drive times 91, 84, Route 2, all looking good as we take a live look out in Weathersfield. Construction has cleared for the morning on 91 north and southbound east. Easy drive into the capital city right now. Waterbury taking uh, no time at all. Traffic moving just fine into the mix master over in Waterbury. Do want to end on this note. The Rocky Hill Ferry is temporarily suspended due to scheduled vessel maintenance. That is going to be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll check back in coming up in the next half hour. But for now, Tim and Eric, I'll send things back over to you. Hi, Lauren, thank you. Let's uh, get you to developing news right now in Southington. Police need the public's help as they're trying to find a missing teenager who might be in danger. Take a look at your screen. This is 19-year-old Nyla Tolo. Southington police said she was last seen this past Saturday at her home on Mount Vernon Road. Her family said Nyla has developmental disabilities. She apparently left her home without her cell phone and police believe somebody might have picked her up. Her family said Nyla always wears a red and black flannel shirt, a black backpack, and an orange or salmon-colored fanny pack around her waist. If you think you've seen her, please call Southington Police right away. All right, well, if you are swimming in student loan debt, listen up. President Biden announcing yesterday that you could get some of your federal student loans forgiven. Yeah, you could get anywhere from ten to $20,000 back. But the thing is, you need to know who qualifies and, for those who do, how much money are you eligible for. There's a lot to get to here, so let's get right over to Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc. Good morning. Hi, good morning to you. Yeah, this is something that a lot of students and families mm -hmm. have been waiting for for a long time to get this announcement. We know it's been in the works for quite some time, and now that it's official, they have a lot of questions naturally, so let's try to answer some of those for you. So under this student debt relief plan, as Tim mentioned, you can get $10,000 
in student loan relief if you make less than $125,000. That is for individuals or $250,000 per household or for couples. Now for lower income families, you can also get up to $20,000 in relief if you received a Pell Grant in college and of course that you meet those income requirements. Now current borrowers and students will be eligible for relief based on their parents income. Now on top of this all, the payment freeze on federal student loans will be extended one last time until December 31st. That freeze started during the pandemic to help those who are struggling financially. Now it was supposed to expire at the end of this month, so that means interest rates on federal loans will stay at 0% until we get to that December 31st deadline. All this means people can start, finally crawl out from under that mountain of debt to get on top of their rent and their utilities, to finally think about buying a home or starting a family or starting a business. Now, as far as when you can apply, well, the Student Debt Relief Plan website says that the application will be available before that pause on federal student, student loan payments ends. So we're expecting that to come up online before December 31st. Of course, we'll watch for any more developments on this. Tim and Erica, we will send it back to you. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, Julian, certainly thanks, a lot yeah. of different uh, ripple effects to get mm -hmm. to there. And a lot of reaction in our state from parents and students on the Student Debt Plan. We caught up with several of them at Quinnipiac as students moved onto campus. On the one hand, I don't mind forgiveness. However, there is sort of an inherent contract when you take on student debt that you would be paying that student debt off. I know Quinnipiac's a really expensive school to go to, and even with a scholarship, it's a lot of money. So, like, helping us out with 10 grand, you know, forgiving 10 grand in debt, could just really help out. Some estimates price tag for the student loan forgiveness program in the neighborhood of 300 to 600 billion dollars. And speaking of college students today in New Haven, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, more than 700 first year students are going to move in at Southern Connecticut State University. Officials there are calling this the first normal move in day on campus for uh, students there since the beginning of the pandemic. Staff and even the university's president will be there to welcome students and their families. Now, several school districts are heading back to class today. This includes Ansonia, Berlin, Newington, and Lime Old Lime schools. And speaking of, kids in that district, Lime Old Lime there, might notice some extra security this year. Over the summer, the district's Board of Education voted to arm security guards on its five school campuses by this fall. Well, this morning class is back in session for students in East Hartford. Yesterday, students at the Langford Elementary School were greeted back with by from staff and also the governor. That's right, the governor was there as well. With COVID precautions loosening for the first time since the pandemic started, there should be no more disruptions to personal learning. Now, this is exactly what parents are hoping for. It's a lot nicer this year. You can see the kids' faces and the kids smiling as they're coming in and out of school. So uh, it's, a, it's a big improvement from last year. The superintendent of East Hartford School says seeing the students find their new classes and meet their new teachers puts a smile on everyone's faces. And in Hartford, the public school system is going to kick off the new year with a staff convocation ceremony. It's actually happening at the XL Center today. That's how big they're going. It starts at 8 o'clock and runs until 10. Well, ahead in our next hour, we're going to talk about school bus safety and what you should be aware of if you're heading out the door today with the kids. Remember, you can expect more from the Fox 61 School Squad. You can scan this QR code on your screen for everything you need to know to get you ready for the first day. You can also get more on Fox61.com and on the Fox 61 app. Well, this morning, five men in Connecticut are being accused by federal investigators of taking part in a half million dollar scheme to steal and sell catalytic converters. An indictment shows Alexander Colostas owned and ran Downpipe Depot and Recycling. That's in East Hartford. Now, he's accused of working with Bryant Bermudez to buy stolen catalytic converters from several people and then resell them to recycling businesses in New York and in New Jersey. Three men who collected the converters are also facing charges. Well, today, a kennel owner who's accused of abusing pets is due in court. David Rivera turned himself in at the beginning of August for an arrest warrant against him. 
He owns Black Rock Kennel in Naugatuck. Investigators began uh, looking at him back in May after somebody discovered their dog had multiple injuries after leaving the kennel.